the last property that we are going to talk about is the power property. And the power property is when we have a power or an exponent raised to an exponent. Okay, so please make sure you have this definition of the power property written down in your notes. Okay, this first one shows, well, what if we only have one term in here? So b raised to the m power, okay, and it's also raised to the n. Okay, when we have this power raised to a power, we are going to multiply those exponents. So the power property is when we multiply. Okay, and the multiplication property, remember we talked about a few days ago, that is when you add the exponents. Okay, so power property is when we multiply those exponents, when it raised to a power. And this second definition talks about when we have more than one term. If we have more than one term raised to that power, so A and B, then we have to make sure that that gets distributed to both terms. Okay, so we would then multiply each exponent by that n or that exponent there. So we'd have a to the nth times b to the nth. Let's go through a few examples. Okay, so let's start with 4 times x to the second raised to the third power. The hardest part to remember when dealing with the power property is that the numbers have those exponents there. Remember that 4 would have an exponent of 1. Okay, so we have to make sure that this 3 gets distributed to all the exponents that are inside the parentheses. Okay, so we'd have 4 and then 1 times 3 and then x and 2 times 3. We're going to multiply that 3 by both of the exponents. So we end up with 4 to the third power and x to the sixth power. And this would be our final answer. Let's do another one. Let's say we have 6 times m times n to the fourth, all raised to the second power. Okay, so again, remember that all these terms that don't have an exponent, they actually have an exponent of 1. So you have to make sure you remember that with the power property. Okay, so this 2, we have to multiply it by all these exponents here. Okay, so we'll start with the 6. 6 had an exponent of 1. 1 times 2 ends up being 2. And then we have m. m had an exponent of 1 times 2. is also an exponent of 2. And then we have n, our last term. It had an exponent of 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Now we can simplify this even further. If we can simplify 6 to the second power, because we know 6 times 6 is 36. So then we have m to the second and n to the eighth. So this is the best answer, 36 times m to the second, n to the eighth. Okay, but this one up here, okay, that is okay, but it's not the best answer we could get. Let's do one where we have negative exponents. Let's do 4 times x to the second times y all raised to the negative third power. Okay, so for this example, if we have a negative exponent, okay, we are still going to do it the same way. Okay, we're going to multiply all of our exponents by negative 3. Okay, and remember, I just put my 1's in place by the 4 and the y. So we'd end up with 4 to the negative 3rd power, x to the negative 6th power, and y to the negative 3rd power. 
Now, usually the directions will say they want a positive exponent. Okay, and we talked about negative exponents. How to make them positive is to move them down to the denominator. So we're going to put our place value up in the numerator as 1 because we need something in that spot. And since all of our terms are going to the denominator, we need that 1 up there as a placeholder. So we end up with 4 to the third power, x to the sixth power, and y to the third power. Okay, so this would be our final answer. Okay, let's do one more with the power property. Let's say we have 2 times p to the third power times 2 times p to the second power. Notice that we have the multiplication property happening inside of our parentheses. Okay, so that's when it gets a little tricky. Okay, now I would separate it up and just do the, the multiplication property first, and then I would go back and do my power property with my exponent. Okay, you kind of want to do your inside part first, but it's up to you. Okay, so here we'd have 2 times p times p times p times 2 times p. Obviously, if you want to, you can just do the multiplication property, but I just want to do it in expanded form for this time. So I have four p's left over, and I have two times two, which I know is four. Now we can't forget to go back and do our parentheses here. So we just simplified inside. So we have four times p to the fourth power, and that is all raised to the second. If we're doing our power property, remember we have to keep our 1 here. We're going to multiply our 2 by both of those inside exponents. So we end up with 4 to the 2nd and p to the 8th. Okay, we could simplify that and say 16 times p to the 8th if we wanted to. Okay, we'll do one more like that, because that one was kind of a tough one. So let's do 4 times x to the 4th times x to the 4th, all raised to the 3rd power. Okay, so again, I would do inside the parentheses first. So I would do 4 times x times x times x times x, so that's my first set, and then four more x's. Okay, so I'm just going to reduce that inside down. So I have four, then I end up with eight x's left over, so x to the eighth. And again, you can't forget to go back and do the parentheses okay, with the power property. So we have four times x to the eighth, all raised to the third power. So we end up with 4 to the third times x to the 24th power. Okay, remember all I did here was I multiplied my 3 by all of the exponents inside the parentheses. Okay, and you can always reduce this 4 to the third down.